I would like to tell you something about agglomeration. What is agglomeration? Agglomeration is actually quite easy. It's sticking particles together. But the main question is, why would you like to do it? Why would you like to stick particles together if you have a good product? There are a thousand reasons why you want to do it. If you have a very good product and somebody says, well, okay, that's great. I want to buy your product. I can put it in a silo, but I never can get it out. Why? Your flowability. For example, this. The flowability of the product is not that good. And sometimes customers say, well, okay, I like your product. It's very good, but I can't get it out of the silo. Or for example, what is time on this moment is quite an issue. It's dusty. And why is dust a problem? Dust in an industrial installation is a big problem due to ATEX dust explosion. And that costs a huge amount of money. Sometimes people say, well, I like your product, it's good, but I don't want to have it because I have ATEX regulation, I have a problem to get it out, or for example, I can't get it dissolved in water. I have to dissolve it again. For example, if I take this, this is natural flour. If I just take a spoon, I put it in water, and it becomes lumpy. And I don't want to have the lumps, I want to have to get it dissolved. Now it's a big trick. If you take, if you agglomerate this flour and you put it in water, you won't get the lumps. That means you can process it further on in your process or somebody can easily just get it in solution in your final product. One of the things if you can buy in Holland is a, a, a shaker and you have to add for, for making pancakes. It's a bottle, you add water on top of it, you shake it a few times, and then it is a nice solution. That's agglomerated flour with a bit of elk, egg powder and a bit of salt, and that's it. And it's agglomerated in a flexion mix. If you now come to, there is a customer who says, I like your product, but I don't like it that it is that dusty, because I can't handle it. Then you have to agglomerate it. If a product is water solutable, you can agglomerate it in nine of the ten times, you can agglomerate it with water. That's pretty easy. You add water and afterwards you evaporate the water again, you're done. But sometimes you can't agglomerate that with water and then you have to add a binder to it or more or less glue. And what type of glue you're using is essential for the further application. For example, if I take flour, I've here made here a few examples, water glass. It's a pretty known binder. I get cream flour. That's great. I have flour, I have agglomerated, but nobody will ever buy it. So you have a product, you have agglomerated, but you make actually finally rubbish. There are other binders as well. There's one with pack. Your agglomerate, your product becomes fatty. It's, it's really a nightmare to handle it. It feels not good. Because agglomeration, especially also in food, is quite often an emotion. For example, in detergents, it's very important that the particle size is just right. They say when somebody picks up a little bit of detergent, they want to have the right feeling. Coming back, we have a product and we say, okay, we don't need a binder because it's water solutable. You now have to have an idea about how much water do I have to add to get the right particles. And then you need a very expensive piece of equipment, a kitchen machine. It's pretty easy, you can do it almost at home. You have a kitchen machine and you install the knives. And what you're actually doing is, you weight it nicely, let you know how much you put in. But in this case, it's not that important. And we just throw it in. Not too much, not too less. You close it up. And what you actually do, you let it spin as fast as you can and you put it at the side and you will have a look at one point the powder is more or less fluidized and at that point you try to add your water why the motion of the powder is at an <coughs> optimum optimum state meaning it's fluidized and you can add water and you're more or less adding water to each particle you just pour it in Nicely and gently. And you will see straight away that the powder starts to flow quite differently. You stop and from time to time you have a look inside and you say, well, is this okay? Ah, 
Yeah, it's still dusty. It's not really agglomerated. That means you have to go a little bit further. The gum's a little bit bigger. And make sure that all the particles, all the powder is involved. To do that, you pick it up and you shake it very gently. Why shake it like that? You have to be sure that everything is involved because otherwise some product sticks to the wall and you add water and you say, oh, that much powder, that much water, so I added that much water. No, you didn't because there's quite a lot of powder sticking around the wall and you, it isn't adding in the process. So shake it. And then you have a product where you say, okay, it's agglomerated, it's not dusty anymore, that looks good. I'm done. No, you're not. Quite often, products seem to be that they are water solutable, and then you say, well, you have to dry them off again. Why do you have to dry them off? They are not stable in this moment. If I squeeze them, they will form a lump. So you can't transport it, you can't do anything with it. Agglomerating drying is quite often done in a fluid bath. So what you can do is from here, you go into a fluid bath. I won't open it, it's more or less pretty easy. You just start it up and you just let it dry. Gently, it's a very gentle way of drying a product so you won't harm the particles that much. And you build until time mix and you feel that the product is dry. You switch it off and then you have, you, then you can do a sieve analyze and you can see how the product looks like. That's pretty important. So you start it off with a problem and you say, okay, this is more or less what you want to have. The product is more or less in the range what a customer would like to have. Then you have to go a little bit step forward because this you can't do this industrial, uh, maybe in China or somewhere, but m mainly not. We have here a flexor mixture, which is doing more or less the same. The powder is falling in from the right angle, it's falling down, and it gets fluidized more or less because the, the shaft is spinning around very fast. So you fluidize the powder, and at the same time, we add water to that. And by adding water, you do exactly the same as here you will see that the particles grow and they will drop down. The residence time in this mixture like that is only 0.8 seconds. So it falls in, you add water and it drops out. And it drops out in a fluid bed. So we have quite often customers running around here and we do all the time trials. We know exactly which customer has a lot of experience with agglomeration. Because then we ask them, what would you like to have? And they say, I don't know, I have to feel. Feel? Yeah, because if you feel the product, you can feel how it moves and how it handles. And that is, you can't, you can say, well, I need that particle size distribution. That's great. But the best guys who know the most about agglomeration are always standing in the bags and standing in front, this is about roughly what I want to have. No, this or this, or it's, it's, it's too hard, it's too soft. They always touch the product, the final product. It's quite essential. If we do a trial here for maybe for only half a day, if after half a day we are already so far that we can say, okay, this is what you want, this is your product you want to have, we collected in half a day so much data that we can build a complete installation from that. It's going pretty fast actually. If a customer say, okay, this is what we want to have, we go and sit down and we make, first make a PNID like that, just we draw how a complete system looks like. And from that, if we say, okay, this is exactly what we want to have, then we go to, we make a complete drawing of the factory, where each piece of equipment is and how they are located to each other because a product likes to fall down, so you don't want to lift the product too, much, too many times. So then you go actually from a kitchen machine to drying, to a flex mix trial, to a big P&ID, to a setup, complete setup, and you have your factory. The main thing about agglomeration is touching. You have to touch the product. You start working here, if you don't touch the product, you won't learn anything at all about agglomeration. And how you agglomerate is it's quite... I have here, for example, here an, another example. This is cacao powder. You make chocolate milk of it. It looks completely different from this. It's the same product. But some customers like this and some customers like that. Why? This looks great. If you have, for example, one of the main branches is Nesquik, you open your can, you would like to see a nice brown powder. 
and you take a spoon and it should stay on the spoon and you want to put it in. So the flowability should be poor and it should look nice. If I have now cacao powder which is in a vending machine, nobody will ever see the product. But the flowability is of importance because it's in a can and you will push it and nothing will come out. Yeah, it doesn't taste like cacao powder. So the flowability is again very important. So the same product, exactly almost the same, exactly the same product. One is agglomerated with steam and the other one is just with water. It can influence the taste. If we do it with steam, we see quite often a an, an change in, stave, in, in taste. What you also quite often see is, uh, is a mouth feeling, what they call. The taste is sometimes the same, but the mouth feeling can be completely different. And that's what we quite often say. On agglomeration is also the emotion of the product. If you have, uh, uh, for example, if you have uh, bigger lumps of sugar of the extreme, feel completely different in your mouth as in very fine powder and it stays longer. A, a bigger agglomerated of the extreme will stay for a longer time in your mouth and feels for a longer time sweet. Instead of a very fine powder, will taste very shortly very sweet and then it's gone straight away. That's what you actually do also in the product. You have some products which has agglomerated sugar. Why are they agglomerated? That you have a bite and for a long time you will feel, or you will taste a very sweet taste. So it influences also the taste quite a bit actually. There are a thousand application trials and each customer has another application trial. So we don't do any application trials at all. We always say one, we give you the product, we roughly know which market would like to have a certain quality. But the application trials are always done by the customer. Because each customer, powder technology is quite complex and there are not that many standards in, in testing powders. There are a few, but it's not so widely spread. So quite often the big firms have their own methods of standardization and application trials. So, yes, there's a lot of application trials. In food there is also a lot of taste trials.